Hey guys, welcome to Dead Health. Let's check out this video call. It's another part of the World War One series from Epic History TV. Okay, and um, it's part four. And this time we're gonna fight on the River Sami. Is is that what it is? Because I played Battlefield One. It's all World War One stuff. And but then there's a map in there called River Sami, and it it, it had like like um you know dried out grass and beautiful location you know um it's all flat though it's it's like there's very few things to hide behind and there's like a a, a crazy ass trench in there and a uh, broken you know like a structure somewhere like a ruins and shit uh far further i don't know if that's the location in real life or not but you know i remember playing that map a lot of times okay but um yeah that that's that was um river sami is that the same sami over here because this is like world war um i don't know we're gonna find out i'm gonna find out but uh, it's called world war one battle of the sami 1916 we're still in 1916 the previous one was also 1916 you know but but now is also 1916 and the next one is gonna be 1917 so that's gonna be cool, okay? But let's just get into this. Uh, it's it's a short video. It's only 14 minutes long, but we're gonna take a look at how fucked up it is because it's World War. We're losing people like flies, bro. Um, <laughs> go check out my previous reaction. I'll put that reaction at the end of this video. You know, people are dying so hardcore. They're dying like it's like uh, scary. It's actually fucking scary how how people are. How many people are dying it's just really scary okay but let's just get into this video it's a small video and you know my reaction is gonna be like what 30 minutes um, let's just get into it okay three two one let's go let's see what the fuck's happening in here and I hope it it, it tones I hope it just doesn't rise up and stays the same or goes down you know I don't like people dying bro I don't, I don't know what to say <laughs> okay but let's just get into it three two one let's go Okay, let's go. It's gonna be crazy. Uh, let's let's. It's gonna be dark and super fucking depressing. Let's go. Three, two, one. Let's go. The most darkest times we've been in, uh, in, in our uh, modern days, modern civilization. You know, I I don't think we've ever been darker than World War One or maybe like World War Two. You know, I don't know. It's a mess. Let's go. Three, two, one. Let's go. Let's go! Yeah! Battle of the Sami, 1st July 1916. Let's go. Let's go! 1916. Hmm. Europe is in the grips of the most destructive conflict yet known. Okay. World War One. World War One. Much of the fiercest fighting takes hmm. place on the Western Front, where okay. British, French, and German armies are locked in a bloody stalemate along 450 miles of trenches. Huh. There have been millions oh, of casualties. Oh shit. But neither Yeah, in the previous video like uh so many people have died, people of your own uh you know side have died and then but then they can't stop the war. Um but people are people on the enemy side are running out. There's only very few people left to fight or something, so they have to continue the war. <laughs> That's how fucked up it is. Holy shit! Just, ju just so that because because the victory is so close that if you don't continue in war, then you have sacrificed all your people for nothing. So you gotta just get in and continue sacrificing more in order to get over this hurdle of people dying. It's holy shit. I mean, we're playing God times level 9000 at that point. Holy shit. Either side can break the deadlock. Hmm. The combination of barbed wire, machine guns, and heavy artillery means troops trying to cross no man's land. Huh. The open ground between the trenches are slaughtered en masse. Oh man. The advantage is always with the defender. Man, were there no trenches? And as if trenches are gonna protect you for, I don't think they'll protect you. I don't think they'll protect you for too long, you know? And also like if, even if you like, 
he also mentioned like you got like really bad uh, quality helmets so in the trenches your head is all exposed and you might die if something like uh i don't know crazy like i don't know something crazy happens like a bomb or something you will fucking die hard and your head is gonna take the most damage you know it's ridiculous wow but the allies are committed to more attacks hmm. they're determined to liberate the parts of france and belgium that were occupied by germany in the first months of the war okay Wow. The British and French have agreed to launch a joint offensive in the summer of 1916. Okay. But the hmm. Germans strike first. Oh. In February, they launch a massive assault on the French fortress city of Verdun. We're done. Okay. We are done. We don't want this anymore. Come on. <laughs> its defense requires all available French reserves. Hmm. So the summer offensive will be led by the British their biggest attack of the war so far. Yeah, apparently we're done. That's why uh, so many people uh, keep mentioning we're done every time. We're done, we're done every time. Like, I, I heard that word so many times. What is it with this pl place that we're done? They keep saying that word. And there's also a video game out there with the uh, name we're done. You know, and it's like, what? When I played the game, it's all trenches and shit and some multiplayer game and the mechanics were slow as fuck. It was really bad. Um, but the experience was cool. I liked it. The game was actually fine. You know, uh, it's the mechanics that, you know, indie game mechanics. It's just not that smooth. But uh, watching the previous video, I found out what Wordon actually is. Okay, people dying in the most bloodiest ways, like a meat grinder. That's why the place is so popular. Holy shit. Wow. <laughs> Let's watch. It's oh, chief man. aim now to relieve pressure on the French at Verdun. Okay. Shit! <laughs> the big push! Let's go! Let's see what the big push is, let's go. The attack will take place along a 25 mile front near the River Somme in July. River Somme from that uh, the map from Battlefield 1. I, I keep playing like... It's been a while since I played it, but I for for like five six years I continued playing Battlefield One. I I, I almost became an expert at, at that uh, game. It's a multiplayer game. There's also a single player campaign, but I only played multiplayer, and I almost became um, you know like super expert at it. But you know I, it's been a while since I played it because also it, the game is also annoying. Um, Forget it. I should not be talking about the game. This is not something where you talk about video games. Okay, let's watch. Okay, so what happened in R uh, River Sami? Let's find out. Hmm. The new British commander, General Sir Douglas Haig, hmm. would prefer to attack near Ypres, where there hmm. are clearer strategic objectives. But hmm. the Somme is where the British and French armies meet, huh. so where a joint offensive must take place. Huh. He would also prefer to wait until his inexperienced divisions have received more training. Huh. But the French need his help now. Okay. Crazy. The Somme has so far been a quiet sector, huh. allowing the Germans to build up strong defensive positions. Here, the Germans have two formidable defensive lines. Okay. With a third under construction. Hmm. Each right. consists of three lines of trenches, fire, oh. support, and reserve, connected by communication trenches. Wow. They bristle with machine gun positions, huh. and are anchored on fortified villages and strong points. Okay. In front of the trenches wow. there are thick belts of barbed wire. Huh. Below are dugouts, some ten meters deep, to shelter German troops from artillery fire. Ooh telephone lines Dang. but but in the game the map is like uh, almost like a barren wasteland with uh, dried out grass uh, a, a, quite a bit of trenches but at the same time there's like one house over there and and one house like a barn over this side a house and a barn and there's a, a ruined construction site in the back it, it's like it's weird it's not exactly like this so so whatever <laughs> buried six feet deep allow troops at the front to communicate with artillery batteries during oh. an attack. Okay. The German troops that hold the line are well trained and oh. most are combat veterans. Alright. Cool! 
combat veterans. Dang, so experienced veterans are also involved. Um, I shouldn't be cheering for this, but you know, they're, they're so good at this. I, I hope they survive. I don't know. Uh, they know we're coming, all right. Oh, shit. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool ass coat. I like it. They know we're coming. The all offensive right. will be led by the British Fourth Army, hmm. commanded by Lieutenant General Sir Henry Rawlinson. With Haig, he draws up the plan of attack. Huh. To overcome the Germans' formidable defences, the British will carry out a massive, week-long artillery bombardment with 1,400 guns. Oh. This is expected to destroy German barbed wire, wow. flatten trenches, and kill their occupants. Oh, shit. Nine flatten trenches? That's how bad it's gonna be, the explosion? Holy shit. Team mines are also dug under key German strongpoints and huh. filled with explosive, ready to detonate oh, just before shit. the attack begins. Oh my god, this is intense. To the north, the British Third Army will make a diversionary attack at Gomacor. Huh. The 16 British and French infantry divisions are then expected to take their objectives with minimal opposition. Okay, wow. The attack will begin at 7.30 a.m. in broad daylight, so the artillery can observe its fire. Oh, man. British morale is high, and the men are confident of victory. Many of the oh. units taking part are PALS battalions, the eager recruits of 1914, oh, now man. about to face combat for the first time. Oh, sh look at the... <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing. These are just kids. And look at this guy. He, he might as well be from high school or some shit. I don't know. These people are like uh, probably super young or just uh, random people like civilians that don't know anything. It's ridiculous. Eager recruits is what he said. It's ridiculous. First time combat. This is insane. It's like, you know, uh, throwing a bunch of human meat into the grinder. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> but on the eve of the assault, hmm. there are worrying reports that the British bombardment has been only partially successful. Huh. 1.6 million shells are fired. Oh but my due god. To inexperience, the, the shot is so hard that the whole thing is moving back. Oh my god. Gun crews, a shortage of heavy guns, and faulty shells. Much of the and and they can't even see uh, where that thing is even landing. You know what I mean? So it's like they're shooting random shit, or is is that even working? Or maybe somebody is like uh, paying attention to the the land and where it's landing, and you know, giving them information on how to shoot or something. I don't know. German barbed wire remains intact. Oh God! German defenders too are largely unscathed in their deep dugouts. Oh, man. And from captured prisoners and listening in on uncoded telephone calls, oh, the God. Germans know exactly when and where the British are coming. Oh, shit. 1st July 1916. As if this isn't worse, we're, we're getting even worse, I guess. Let's go. Oh, man. The Allied artillery bombardment reaches its peak at 7 a.m. Hmm. At 7.20, the British detonate an enormous mine under a German strongpoint, the Hawthorne oh. Redoubt. Oh. British troops rush forward to occupy the crater. Wow! At 7.28, further mines are detonated under German strongpoints along the front. Huh. At 7.30, the Allied bombardment moves on to the German second line as okay. British and French infantry begin their advance across no man's land. Uh, all right. <laughs> German troops, meanwhile, race up from their dugouts oh, to God. set up machine guns. Oh, man. Fucking buckets of bullets. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's an enduring myth that all the British infantry climb out of their trenches and walk steadily towards the German line. Huh. A few units do but most send men out into no man's land before the bombardment lifts. Oh, man. So the final dash toward the enemy line is as short as possible. Okay. But in the northern sector, whichever tactics are used, the British are easy targets for German machine gunners, hmm. especially where they bunch up to get through the few gaps in the barbed wire. Dang. 
the British infantry advance bravely. Okay. But are mown down in their hundreds. Oh man. Some units do break into the German yeah. line. Yeah, compared to the Germans, the Britishers are, are like not really that, yeah, not really that effective. Or maybe they're effective, but they're, they have some problems. It's ridiculous, bro. The Germans are mowing down, literally. Holy shit. Near Thiepval, the 36th Ulster Division captures hmm. the Schwaben Redoubt. Huh. But without support on either flank, it's isolated. And the survivors are forced to retreat that night. Huh. On their right, the 32nd Division takes the Leipzig Redoubt. Okay. While near La Boiselle, the 34th Division captures the Loch Nagar Mine Crater. Huh. Cool. But these are just small toeholds in the German line. Oh. Far short of their objectives. Oh, fuck. Oh, man. Oh, God. The fog of war. Holy sh. This is not. This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're not hearing of people dying as much um, compared to the previous video, but here we're actually seeing some combat, and you know maybe there's going to be some kind of strategy. But this is not Napoleon War, is it? it? We're not running on horses trying to you know kill with kill with swords and shit. We're not cutting limbs off or anything. We're just shooting bullets. So trenches are the only way forward, and if not, then we got a bunch of troops. Um, maybe possibly uh, trying out some strategies. I don't know. We'll see. The fog of war. Yeah. In World War One, one of the greatest challenges faced by commanders hmm. is getting accurate information about the course of the battle. Yeah. Reliable field radios haven't been invented yet. Oh shit. Telephone lines are regularly cut by shell fire. Oh. Wow. So officers must turn to messengers, flag oh. signals. And we, uh, I've seen a lot of movies where this... I also seen this uh, other movie called 1917. It's literally World War I stuff. And the next video is definitely... It's going to be uh, of that time, 1917. So, you know, that movie is like this dude throughout the whole movie tries to deliver a message to stop the war, okay? It's like, holy shit! The movie is like one shot and it's like there's one scene. The They play with the shadows and everything. It's just so... I've not seen that kind of scene in any movie, and we'll never see another one like that. It's fucking mind-blowing. Holy shit. What a great movie. Wow. You know, go check that movie out, 1917. You'll see how great it is. It's just visionary spectacle on screen. Like, seriously. Light signals. Even homing pigeons. Hmm. None of which is completely reliable. Huh. Oh, pigeons! To get around this problem, <laughs> during wow. an attack... It, can you trust the pigeons, though? We're, I mean, like, we're dying here. And you're gonna trust a bunch of little birds? I don't know. Can they... Do they do the job, pro, like, perfectly? I don't know. Supporting artillery works to a fixed timetable, moving huh. their fire onto the next line of enemy defenses at hmm. a set time. Huh. So, when the infantry start their attack, mm. gunners adjust their fire onto the second line of enemy defences. Okay. But if the infantry get held up, the mm. supporting fire keeps moving on according to the timetable. The infantry oh. get left behind and are at the mercy of enemy oh. machine guns. Shit! Aerial observation by balloons and aircraft can provide valuable information. But do, won't the enemy see that there's a balloon slowly floating up into the air? <laughs> I don't know what they would do then. Maybe they'll shoot at it? It's ridiculous. Uh, probably, uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's all messy. And, you know, we were not even, like, uh, te technologically advanced back then. And it's like, wow, so many problems. But now we can't even afford another war. That's how advanced we are. Holy shit, I'm, I'm like, shocked at that. Like, but wow. rely on good weather and control of the skies. Huh. This is why, on the 1st of July, it takes British commanders hours, even wow. days, to find out which attacks have been successful huh. and which have failed. Oh my god. This makes god. it extremely difficult for them to react to the situation with oh. any speed. It takes sometimes days? Holy shit. I mean, like, when you're waiting for it, the the result has already happened and it could be a defeat 
and you don't even know and you're waiting for the message to to know about what happened holy shit it's terrible terrible gains in the south what happened in the south let's find out hmm. Crazy. You know what? This one is not as fucked up as the previous ones. Like, ever since I started this series, people are dying left and right. But in this one, it's more combat and strategy and messengers, messages, information. It's fucking uh, actually very cool. It's actually entertaining to see. Um, but I hope nobody dies, though, you know. Further south, there is much greater success. Hmm. Despite heavy losses, the 21st and 7th Divisions take Mametz and cut off the heavily defended village of Fricourt, which the huh. Germans abandon overnight. On their huh. right, the 18th and 30th Divisions take their objectives, including the village of Montauban, which is secure by 11 a.m. Huh. Alongside them, the veteran French 20th Corps also takes its first day objectives, as huh. well as 2,500 German prisoners. Wow. The Germans didn't expect the offensive to extend so far south and mm. are less well prepared. Okay. And crucially, the Allied bombardment is boosted by French heavy guns, which are much wow. more effective at destroying barbed wire and German strongpoints. Okay. At 9.30 a.m., French colonial troops lead the attack south of the Somme River. Huh. Okay. The French seize all their objectives and take 3,000 more prisoners. Wow. Wow! Despite success Shit. in the south, hmm. the first day of the Battle of the Somme is a costly failure for oh. the British. Oh, man. Oh, German man. losses for the day are estimated at 12,000 men. Yeah, it, It's not like Napoleon series where you can pick and choose and, and wish for them to win and whatnot, because I, I sympathize with both the sides here. People are dying so hard. And I could see Germans, you know, a, a sympathetic side towards Germans. I could see that. And then the Britishers, I could see both sides. And it just, it's like, why? Why, God? Why are you putting, why are you testing us all like this? Why are you putting us into this, uh, you know, like crazy, crazy situation? This is ridiculous, man. The you French know? lose 7,000. Hmm. But the British suffer a staggering 57,000 casualties. Oh, no! One third of them killed. Oh, God. The 1st of July, 1916, oh, becomes the bloodiest day in the history of the British Army. Oh, my God. I thought in the previous video they were about to win. I guess that's a different, uh, you know, different uh, part of the combat fighting. I don't know, man. I'm kind of confused, but whoa! Whoa, that's a serious loss. That's crazy. And it's just the first day. In a Can they afford more troops anymore? I don't know. It's uh, This whole war thing is fucked up and stupid. I'm sorry. It, I know uh, many nations fought in this. And you might be patriotic about that. But this is fucked up, bro. A battle that yeah. rages for another four months. F Think about how many uh, soldiers that were killed. How many people have just got married or had kids, you know, back in their houses, back in their home? And imagine how many uh, old people and their sons left for the war and died. Like, this is so tragic. This is so, it's like so many families have been ruined. Not just people that are dead. Their families have been ruined too. Wow, especially people that, are, that just got married or, or about to get married and stuff. It's ridiculous, bro. Finally ending in November, amid freezing rain and mud. Hmm. By then, the Allies have advanced 10 miles, at a cost of 430,000 British casualties, oh, 200,000 French casualties, and 450,000 German. Yeah, and, and the families that were ruined, and these people, innocent people that are, you know, pushed into this um, b fucking meat grinder to die and shit. It's just so devastating. And back then people were like so morally righteous, so morally good. 
and 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 you know they 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 just don't fuck around or anything you know they just get they just have a good life they're married life they have kids they raise the kids properly too but nowadays it's like single mom fucking you know kids without parents or kids without a dad without de- like dads it's just ridiculous or step dads stupid shit you know but back then people are like very serious about family and then they got this shit going literally hell on earth like oh my god and and ruining the families i don't know how they survived it's it's crazy i i, I feel so bad man it's ridiculous it makes the Battle of the Somme one of the bloodiest in history. Oh man, and that's why this map was added into that game. Battlefield 1, that's why. Because it was the bloodiest shit ever. Holy crap. I thought they just picked a map from World War One or something. But no, because of this is why they picked it. Oh man. Fuck. In British popular memory, the Somme is remembered as an unmitigated disaster and tragedy. Evidence oh, of the incompetence of British generals yeah. and the pointless. But when you send in people that are fighting for the first time in a, engaging in combat for the first time and inexperienced young children, basically, it makes no sense. I, I think you would fail, you know. It's so easy to catch a bullet we, because whoever decided to make a gun, whoever invented the gun, I don't know who it is, but whoever invented it, he fucked up for the rest of the world for you know generations to come holy shit oh my god or if he didn't make it somebody else would have made it i I guess it's not really his fault though sacrifice of the gallant soldiers under their command oh man but to those who fought it and those at home the battle of the somme was seen as a success oh casualties were enormous back people back at the home they're always blind and brainwashed i'm keep Somebody told me why you, uh, you know, put the blame on the people. But the people are the most brainwashed, fucked up idiots. I'm sorry, okay? I'm also part of the public. But people are always brainwashed and they're all blind. They're always, you know, you know, making decisions in a split second and shit. Worried, panicking and everything, you know? So the people at home are like, this is a success. So many people of ours have died for this nation. How, how amazing. It's ridiculous. Your your son just died, and you're so happy about. I mean, I understand, but still, like you, so many people, young people are dying, of 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 many families. Your family, and and you're cheering. I I don't know about that. You know, it's death. Stop celebrating. Stop. I mean, be patriotic, but to the point of war. I don't know about that. And hard to bear, but across Europe, every warring nation was suffering terrible losses as all commanders struggle. I, I mean, you can be patriotic even during the war, but then your your children are dying, you know what I mean? ...to find an answer to trench warfare. Yeah. And at the Somme, the British had not only helped save their French ally, who went on to defeat the Germans at Verdun, but learned vital lessons about how to fight on the yeah. Western Front. Oh man, this is how you learn where, so uh, on top of uh, so many people's dead bodies. Oh man! Most of all, the Battle of the Somme had been a costly but necessary wearing down of the German army. I I think about all those poor people that died in there, and you know I feel so bad for them, bro. I'm like, you know, as an Indian, rest in peace. You know, you know, rest in peace. I I hope everything you know, happens, you know, at least they're happy in the afterlife and they probably will, um, you know, when, when, they, when they leave their families, you know, it's so devastating and I hope they meet their families in the, in the future when everybody's old and, you know, dead and whatnot. I don't know. I'm talking about our afterlife. I hope they meet, you know. It's just so devastating. An immensely painful but vital step on the long road to victory. This, this video is actually more depressing than the previous ones, you know. I know that a lot of people died in the previous ones, but this is a isolated location, like River Sami, in which people died, you know what I mean? It's like an isolated, specific narration of this, this what happened in this place. And it's so 
so devastating. I, I am like sad right now. You know. Wow. Fuck. Maps and research Dang. for this video come from Osprey Publishing's campaign series. Every Osprey book examines a particular battle, campaign, or combat unit in Crazy. authoritative, meticulous detail. Okay. And with more than 3,000 titles, they hmm. cover everything from ancient warfare to modern conflict. Hmm. Visit their website to see their online catalogue. Hmm. Osprey Publishing. Go check Epic that out. History TV depends Buy some books. on donations from its fans through its cool. Patreon page. Please click cool. the link. Uh, go to go find pay out something for Patreon of Epic History TV. Video. Go pay him. He deserves it. All right. Um, yeah. Wow. What a crazy. Yeah. Every time I watch this, I'm like, oh man, it's gonna be so dark and depressing. Get ready. Get ready to take it all in. <laughs> we need to process this shit. You know, <laughs> take it in raw, like raw materials in a machinery and process it. It's like that. Okay, World War One Battle of the Somme or Sami, uh, 1916. And next we're going to go into 1917, like that movie. Okay, holy shit. This is so depressing and dark and it's tragedy. It's like so it's devastating i'm not even related to these people i'm not even part of their generation and i feel so bad and i'm not even feeling as bad enough you know because the losses are like oh man people say i mean fight for your country right and that's good but then you you, you die horrible ways so many people losing and and people celebrate if you succeed and it's like Dude, it just people just died, and you're celebrating. Why? Because I mean, come on, man. It, it's just ridiculous, bro. It's it's it doesn't make any sense. Which side do you wanna be? You don't even know what the fuck. Okay, that's how divisive this whole World War thing is, you know. But um, yeah, a World War One Battle of the Sami, 1916. Interestingly, this playlist, this series has made me want to go play Battlefield World again. <laughs> I'm, I don't know. I, I tried to install, and I want to install again. I just want to play the game again because uh, you know I, I'm, I'm getting lost into that game a lot. You know because I don't have a visual understanding or seeing or learning from. Um, within world war before you know and and the game is the only thing that you know showed me up close some things the uh art you know aesthetic of it how it looks how it was how people ran how how crazy it was how fucked up it was you know so you know i just you know go back to that game sometimes and i'm sorry if i talk about video games when people are dying in this i'm sorry but um, it, this this series reminds me of the ga that game. You know, it's crazy. Go go check out Battlefield One if you haven't already. It, there's a lot of it. It gets really chaotic and annoying and pisses you off a lot because you die out of nowhere because the bullets are flying everywhere. It's insane. Okay, go check out that game. And also, like, there's a lot of cheaters. So just warning you. Okay, a lot of cheaters. A lot of cheaters. Probably you won't find that many cheaters in the. Um, you know american side or anything but if you go into like asian servers you, <laughs> you as soon as you spawn you die end of story sometimes this some cheaters just dominate forever okay so <laughs> for multiple sessions like and, and every session is like half an hour so it's like a whole day of you getting owned by a cheater it's ridiculous okay so <laughs> that's what it is um world war battle of the sami 1916 um river sami and and uh, tragedy super tragedy okay ridiculous strategy tra tragedy okay really devastating dark and depressing really made me sad too okay so yeah that's it for this reaction if you like this reaction please make sure to subscribe to this channel it's my main channel this will like two to three uh, videos a day go check out my backup channel all the napoleon series other epic history tv all stuff was over there until i got a copyright strike and you know i don't even want to react to anything you know what i mean but i'm here because some people are wa a little bit of watching 
and also like I gotta make a reaction mashup for the new meat cannon video that came out so I'm forced to react to stuff okay so and I hope you liked it uh, please do subscribe please give me a lot of views this world war series is not getting as many views as I got on my Napoleon series and it's like it's so disappointing so yeah uh, do do me a favor subscribe to both my channels go check out um, my backup channel as well the links will be in the description and I'll see you guys later in the next part and we're gonna take a look at the 1917 movie or something it's gonna be like that I might think of that movie a lot while that happens because the next one is 1917 it's gonna be crazy the name of that movie okay so yeah that's it for this reaction please subscribe to both my channels and I'll see you guys later goodbye <laughs>